Over the last couple of years, my kids have started to walk to school on their own. So I've wanted to make sure that I know when they leave the house, when they arrive at school, when they leave school and when they arrive at home. I'm doing this with products from Tile and also Home Assistant. If you'd like to know I'm doing this, then stick around and watch the video. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone, my name's Paul from Project Smart Home. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I'm using these products from Tile. So I've got a combination of a few Tile Mates, a credit card, Tile device, and even uh, a little button device that I'm gonna show you how I've attached to uh, my son's bike so I can track that where that is at any one point in time. Uh, I've also got um, Tile devices connected to my keys as well so I know where they are. And I'm using these same Tile mates so that I can track the kids bags. So I've got one of these attached to each of the kids bags. So when they leave home, arrive at school, wherever they are, then I can see where they are. Um, so I get notifications on Home Assistant. And then if you're anything like me, you're always losing things around the house. So I can never find my wallet. So I've attached one of these credit card um, tile devices to my credit card holder. Um, it's an RFID credit card holder. So I'm, I've kind of got it strapped on the outside, but it seems to work quite effectively. So when I'm stumbling around the house trying to find my credit card holder, I can just go into the Tile app and get this, this thing to ring. And I'll show you how that works in a minute. Um, so yeah, I'll take you through how I've set those up in this video. I'll take you through um, how I'm using them in Home Assistant and how I've set up the automations to notify me and my wife when the kids leave, school, leave home, arrive at school, and if they leave school at any particular time of the day. Uh, hopefully that sounds useful. I'll get into it now. Thanks for watching. What I'm going to do now is take you through what's in the box on the tiles that I've bought. So because of what I wanted to do, there was a few different tiles that I wanted to make use of. So this is quite a handy package that, um, that, that I ordered. So there's a couple of tile mates, which are the square... Um, the square tiles on the top left and top right hand side of things. So I'm using those for bags. So for my bag, I've got one of my laptop bag for work in case I leave that anywhere. And then I've got the other one atta being attached to one of my kids' bags. The one in the middle there that I'm highlighting at the moment is like a button tile that I've got attached to uh, one of my kids' bikes. So when he's out and about or takes his bike to school, just in case it gets moved, then we could, should be able to easily track where that is. And then the tile at the bottom is for my wallet. So I'm forever leaving that around the house and can never find it. So I can easily track um, where I've left my wallet with that one as well. So before you can do anything with these, what you need to do is um, get the tile app installed onto your phone and then you can start adding the devices into your application. What I'll do now then is just take you through how I've added some of the tiles in the app. So as you can see, I've got the app already set up on my phone. <clears throat> so you simply just need to go into it and click add devices. Once you've got the um, tile, you then need to click on the button and it'll make that noise and it'll start communicating with the app itself and setting up the device and activating the tile. And you should have been heard, heard, able to hear that in the background. And then once it's added, it'll be able to you'll be able to select what the tile is going to be used for. So I said I'm using mine for backpacks and keys and my one well, my son's bike and also my wallet. I'm just scrolling through just to show you the types of things that people are using these tile devices for. So this one's for the backpack. It's just making sure that the app can communicate. And then one of the nice things about these is if you've got a tile on your keys or your bag or whatever, you can press the button twice on that and it'll actually go off and find your telephone. So that's an another, yet another thing that I struggle to find in the house. So that's it, that's, that's, that's that one set up. 
and that's just adding the tile mate. He talks about this What's Life 360, but I didn't, I haven't bothered setting that up. Some of the settings that are available within the tile device itself. So what I'm going to do is add yet another tile. I mean, if, if you you know if you've seen one one of these, you've seen them all, so don't feel you need to hang around for this section. You can move on. So I'm setting up this time <coughs> the small button device. So again, it's looking for the tile. In fact, this one looks as though it's the um, the credit card one that I've set up. So again, you need to scroll through the list and decide which type of device it's setting up. So this is the credit card type device. Uh, audio is disabled on this, but it is communicating with it. And you can again, you can decide whether you want two-way communication between your app and the device. If you want your um, tile device to be able to locate your phone. So on the things that belong to me, I'm doing that. So on my wallet card, on my backpack, on my keys, I've got those um, set up. You can get extended um, capability on these, but I've not felt the need to do that. Uh, I'm purely just kind of using this for integration with Home Assistant, which we'll get onto a little bit later in the video. So the last device that I'm going to set up, I think this one is for, um, it's either another mate or one of these buttons. Same process, you click on the tile device, that I guess puts it into some sort of pairing mode, which talks to the app, which needs to be in, in the close vicinity. So it looks like this is the button device that I set up for my son's bike. Yep, there it is. <clears throat> and again, going through the same process. <clears throat> Trying to find the phone. And again, audio is disabled on this video, but um, it, the, you can hear an audible sound between the tile device. And then once the tile device is talking to the phone, it'll... it'll um, you'll hear a noise on the phone as well. So I did actually follow those instructions. Uh, I turned my son's bike upside down and stuck it to the underside of his seat and gave it a good push and left it for a while to make sure it was stuck. And it stayed on there now. It's um, probably a couple of weeks later now since I stuck the tag button onto my son's bike and it's, um, it's still there. So I'm just Something I haven't covered before is you can actually give these tiles a more sensible name so you can understand what they are when you go into the tile app itself. So as you can see there, I've just um, given it the name of my son and what device it's on. So I don't want that to be able to kind of ring back to my phone. There's no need for that. But as you can see, that's now set, it, set up. So it's now communicating between the app and the tile itself. And then once it's done that, the process should be finished. So I'm just renaming the ones that I've set up. So this is one I've added to my laptop bag for work in case it gets lifted while I'm wandering around. So that's the end of that section. Um, we've gone through adding the tiles into the app renaming them and just testing them to make sure they work. We'll now go through and start integrating Tile into Home Assistant and setting up some automations. So assuming that you haven't got the Tile integration set up already, it's going to be fairly familiar for, for most of you that have got Home Assistant already. So if you go into Home Assistant, uh, go into Settings, and integrations then you can obviously add the integration from um, the integration button so let's type in tile it's a cloud-based service so you need to type in your username and password for your tile 
account which you would have set up when you set up the application on your mobile phone and then you click submit and it's as easy as that so once it's up and running you can go into it and read the documentation that doesn't give you much more information but it's a native integration and it's um, pretty straightforward I can't really say much more than that what I'll do now then is take you through how I've integrated tile into home assistant so this is my um, Home Assistant dashboard, which I tend to use on mobile devices. So that's why it didn't look very pretty there. So if you go into settings, integrations, into tile, I've already got this set up, but it's gonna be pretty straightforward to, to do uh, if you need to do that already. Um, so I've got four tiles set up, two backpacks, my car keys, and obviously my phone, which is controlling things. So as we've just seen, I've already added some, um, some other tile devices. So I've just refreshed the integration. It's now gone from four to seven. So you can now see that I've added my daughter's backpack, uh, my backpack, the wallet um, has been added as well. I haven't added the bike at this stage yet, but that has been added. So it's pretty straightforward to do. Um, to get those up and running and visible. Before I go into the Home Assistant automation, so what I'll do is just talk you through my dashboard. So this is a representation of what my dashboard looks like on my mobile phone. So as you can see, I've got Home and Away section. So I've got people and their belongings here. So first of all, uh, the time I took this photo, I was away from home, so my mobile phone is physically away and that's represented on the dashboard. Um, and my bag is at home. My wallet is at home, <laughs> typically. Um, my wife is at work. Uh, and then on the second row, George has left his phone at home, but the next icon is his bag. So he's at school with his bag. Um, and the next one along is Jack. Jack's taken his phone to school, and he's also got his bag with him at school. And you can see the little logo in the top right hand corner of each each section um, you can see the image of where they are whether at home or at school and at the bottom George's bike is at school and Emily has got uh, she's actually at her mum's work at the moment so that's kind of where we're going to get to with the automations we're going to create now so two parts to it one is obviously creating this dashboard so you can see what's going on and the second part is actually getting physical notifications about when people change their location. So as one of the children arrive at home or go to school, then um, we can see that change of location. So as they arrive at school, I'll get a notification. As they arrive at home, I'll get a notification. So we'll go through that now. Okay, so now I'll take you through the left school notification. So on the left hand side of the screen here, I've got an existing automation that I've got set up for um, my son's uh, device. So we've got um, two triggers. One is his mobile phone and one is for the backpack. And then if either of those leave the school zone, then a message will be sent to mine and my wife's mobile phone. So what I'm going to do now is using the zones from within Home Assistant I've got set up already, I'm going to create an automation to say that as soon as Jack's left the school zone, then send me and my wife a message. So we'll just step through that now. So the first thing we'll do is add a trigger based on zone and also using the entity. So this automation is for my daughter who's just about to start big school. So what I'm gonna do is select the zone that I want to, to um, be notified about and then my daughter's backpack. So when my daughter's backpack leaves the school zone, then I will get a message based on the following trigger. 
So we're going to do use call service and call service notification. So I want to be notified on my mobile phone via a message when she's left school. So it's my mobile phone, which is obviously set up with the Home Assistant app on. I'm just going to copy the message from the previous automation into the new automation and uh, change the name to the right child. So that's pretty straightforward and I'm going to do the same to um, add my wife's mobile phone so she gets the same message as well. So we'll just speed through that quickly. So once the notifications have been set up, then I can just save the automation with an appropriate name and that will be that complete. And I'll just give you an example on the screen now of what the message looks like when the notification is triggered. So it's straightforward as that. What I'll do now is take you through the welcome home notifications. Um, so this is very similar to the notifications I get when the kids arrive from at school, but there's a little bit of a twist in it. So it's worth watching this section. So what I'm gonna do is just open an existing welcome home notification, just so you can see what I'm doing. And then what I'll do is I'll create a new notification based on the old notification, just so you can see how to do it. So I've got this one for my eldest son. So when either his mobile phone or his backpack enters the home zone. So obviously on the map, I've got zones set up. Um, if anybody's interested in knowing how to do that, then let me know. But essentially where I live, I've got different zones set up depending on where people are at work, at school, at the shops, at friend's house. So I can kind of track in Home Assistant where people are. So in the notification itself, I'll, as I say, I'll use this one as an example, and then we'll get a new notification going as well. So once the zones uh, triggers have been set up, then what I do is, um, and this is the twist. So when George arrives at home from school, for example, comes in through the front door, um, there's a trigger then to say, okay, play a welcome home message for George. So this could be all sorts of stuff, but I've just kept it simple, said welcome home. Um, might be useful to remind the kids to do chores or do homework or whatever, but uh, at the moment it's, it's just that. And then as before, there's just uh, a, a, a notification message that's sent to myself and my wife to let us know that George has arrived home. So what I'm gonna do now then is go through the process of creating a similar automation for my daughter based on that same notification automation that I've got set up for George. So we've got brand new um, notification. So what I need to do first, as I've got here, is create the trigger for the zone. So essentially, when my daughter arrives in a particular zone, well, her backpack arrives in a zone, so I'm assuming she's gonna be attached to her backpack um, when she arrives at home. So she's got a backpack, it's arrived in the home zone, and then I now need to set up the, well, what, what do I do now? So I'll just go through the process of creating the trigger for when the door opens, and the door has, I think it's um, a smart things mo um, door sensor I've got on that one. 
So as long as that door opens within a 10 minute period, then the next phase of the automation is then to play a nice welcome home message for Emily. So you, I guess you could get quite imaginative with this and do lots of different things, but at the moment I've just kept it simple and said, uh, welcome home, Emily. So on the previous one, I've used Google um, um, text to speech, but as we've now got the introduction of the uh, home assistant text to speech, I'm gonna start using that instead. So we're using the English notification text to speak from home assistant. And then the final bit, which we've seen before, is setting up the notification. So both my wife and I get a message so we know that our daughter, children have arrived home safely. Using the call service notification and then just simply sending a message to my mobile phone and the same for my wife. So I've sped through this because I've covered this previously in the section just before so it's pretty straightforward stuff then obviously once you've got that set up and working you can just save that with a sensible name and that takes you to the end of the process hopefully that was useful what i'll do now then is show you how we can add the tile elements to the dashboard so I've split my screen here into two. The left-hand side that I'm scrolling through now shows kind of the mobile view on how I typically view this dashboard on my mobile phone. I don't tend to view the dashboards any other way. So you can see I've got a home and away section in front of you there, uh, and where I can see the status of people's mobile phones, whether they're at home, whether they're away, and the backpacks. So in this section, what I'm gonna do is show you how to add the new tiles that we, we've added for um, some backpacks. So what I'm gonna do is I've got the dashboard open on the right hand side of the screen. I'm gonna edit my main dashboard now. So what I tend to do to keep things tidy is add, the, add them into horizontal stacks on the dashboard so I can then put you know a few items into each. So to make it easy for myself, I've kind of got the left-hand side of the screen demonstrating what's there at the moment, and then the right-hand side of the screen um, creating the new um, icon for the dashboard. So I'm gonna look at the existing horizontal stack that I have in place for two backpacks, and I'm gonna use that as the basis to create the new one. So you can see this is for my son's backpack and how I've got the icon on the dashboard configured. So when I click on that icon, it takes me to the map and I can see where that device is. And then just looking at the YAML code there, you can see I'm using the mushroom integration for the card. So on the right hand side, I've created a new horizontal stack what I'm going to do is use the entity for the new backpack uh, for the tile for my daughter and give it a name. And then I'm just going to copy the configuration from left to right. So. I've given, given the icon a backpack icon so it's easier to see what that tile's trying to describe. And as you saw on my dashboard, I'm using the vertical layout. So the primary information, I want the name, I want to see the state, and I want to see uh, an icon. So when I click on that icon on my dashboard, it will then take me to the map where I've got my zones configured and I can generally see where um, 
where these tile devices are located. So I'm just whizzing through now, adding the second backpack, but as we've gone through this already, I've sped it up quite significantly. Just using the same information and then navigating to the map. So now I want to position my new horizontal stack in the dashboard where I want it. So then when I view the information on my mobile device, it's in a better place. So you can see your dashboard was updated, refresh to change. So I'm refreshing it now and I can see the two new backpacks that I've got. So at the moment, it's got the little home icon in the top right hand corner. If it's in a different zone, then you would see that icon change. And then if you click on the icon, it takes you to the map so you can see exactly where that is in case it's just in an away state. Thanks very much for watching the video to the end. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it useful. I certainly enjoyed making it. Um, so I've essentially covered how I'm using Tile with Home Assistant. And I guess there's two parts to this. The bit I've covered in my video today is around getting notifications about when devices uh, arriving home um, on children's backpacks and how to get visibility in Home Assistant and where those devices are. The other part to that is um, finding things. So if you're at home like me and you can't find your keys or you can't find your wallet or phone or whatever, then you can use the Tile application to do that. So I'll just show you quickly how you use that. I haven't found a way to do this in Home Assistant natively. So to find devices, I'm, I'm actually having to use the tile thing. So if I go into the application itself on my phone, and for example, if I want to find my wallet, which is here at the moment, but if imagine it's somewhere around the house, then I can just click on the, click on the screen icon and it finds it, it finds the device. So that's been pretty useful around the house. Um, and works quite well and again the other way around so if I wanted to find my mobile phone and I've got my keys and the tile then I should be able to just click and the phone starts ringing so again good for finding where things are so again hopefully the video is useful um, please leave some comments or um, any questions you might have any details that you want some more information on and hopefully I'll catch you again in another video. Thank you, bye.